Amen. Praise the Lord. At this time, we are going to move on in our service to the word of God. God wants to speak to us today. Hallelujah. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the churches. Today, God wants to talk about becoming like Jesus. The title of this word is Becoming Like Jesus. Becoming like Jesus. Let us turn in our Bibles to the epistle of 1 John. 1 John chapter 3. And I'm going to read verse 2 and 3. Becoming like Jesus. First John chapter 3, starting from verse 2. Now, beloved, beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure, becoming like Jesus. So the Bible says, we are not yet like him, but when he appears, we shall be like him. And if you really want to be like him when he appears, you must purify yourself. Now, sanctification is the process of transforming us believers into the likeness of Christ. And the Bible is saying, when he appears, we will be like him. At Jesus' coming, we shall be transformed into his likeness. But what is Jesus like? For us to become like Jesus, we should know what he is like. And in verse 3 of 1 John chapter 3, it says, Every man that had this hope in him purified himself, even as he is pure. So if you believe this, and if you have this hope, then you must purify yourself. You must purify yourself in anticipation of his coming. The Bible says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And if you want to purify yourself, that means you must avoid offending God. You must avoid doing things that grieve the Holy Spirit. If you want to purify yourself, when you look at 1 John chapter 3, verse 2 and 3, they go together. Those that purify themselves is because they want to be like Jesus when he appears. And to purify your, yourself, you must first go to the cross and die. You must first go to the cross and die. Becoming like Jesus means you must go to his cross. Now, the cross of Christ is is central to our faith. The, the, the cross demonstrates the character of God. It shows you the love of God for sinners and his perfect justice at the cross. It's like his love for sinners and his perfect justice. They meet at the cross. Somebody had to pay the price for, for sin. And Jesus Christ, a sinless man, the Lamb of God, a man that knew no sin. At the cross, he paid the price. He met the terms of God's justice at the cross. And at the same time, demonstrated love for sinners by being our substitute on that cross. So if we want to really become like Jesus in 1 John chapter 3, verse 2, if we really want to become like him, we must go to the cross. And when you get to the cross, believers, the cross will strip you of your pride in who you are. If you're still arrogant about who you are and what you've accomplished, you've not gone to the cross. Those that go to the cross will be stripped of their pride, especially their pride in who they are at the cross. The cross will demand that you lay down your old man. As we celebrate Good Friday tonight, let us remember these things. The cross will demand that you lay down your old man. 
And this was the problem with the Pharisees. The Pharisees liked the way they were. They were comfortable. The Pharisees, the scribes, the Sadducees, they loved the way they were. They were not willing to lay down their life for anybody. In fact, they wanted others to lay down their lives for them. They never went to the cross. If you want to be like Jesus Christ, you must go to the cross. Now, the Pharisees and the, and the Sadducees, they were religious leaders of their day. So was Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came on the scene. And the crowd, the multitude started going after him. And they said, this man has come. He's the leader of a sect. But what Jesus was, was he, he was the leader of a new faith. He was the leader of a kingdom. He came to introduce a kingdom. So the Pharisees and the Sadducees, full of religion, were not willing to go to a cross to lay down their lives for their own disciples. Now, when you get to the cross, the cross is not a pleasant place. It's a rugged, gory place. The cross is a place of slaughter. The cross is a slaughterhouse. But look at Jesus. Jesus was so clean. And he made himself dirty. That we might become clean. And that's what real ministry is. You are a believer and you are afraid to get dirty. You are a believer and you are afraid to wash feet. You are a believer and you are afraid to, to go where the rubber meets the road. To help save souls, to minister to people. Because you don't want to disturb your, your neat schedule. Then you've not really been to the cross. Because when you get to the cross, the cross will ask you to lay all down so that you can serve men. Jesus says, greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life. Lay down his life means the cross for his friend. Let us turn briefly in the Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I will be reading from verse 21. I will read verse 21 rather. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So you see, unlike the Pharisees, here is a man, Jesus, willing to get dirty in service to others without relinquishing his purity. What does that mean? God made him sin for us. Who knew no sin? So he was not a sinner. The scripture never says Jesus was a sinner. He was never a sinner. He never committed a sin. Yet the sin of the whole world was imputed to him. So that we might be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So Christ did not become a sinner. He remained the perfect and spotless lamp of God without wrinkle, without blemish, so that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So as we celebrate Good Friday, let us remember these things. We must celebrate Good Friday because we want to become like him. So yes, our sins were imputed to him, it is like Christ was slapped with our dirt that we might be made clean. All our dirt was put upon him. He went to that cross and all our dirt was put upon him so that we might be made clean. At the cross, the one that knew no sin became sin for us. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So becoming like Jesus... If we truly want to become like Jesus, to be Christ-like, it means that our righteousness must surpass that of the Pharisees. The Pharisees were not willing to go to any cross to make any sacrifice. And God is saying our righteousness must surpass the righteousness of the Pharisees. Why? The righteousness of the Pharisees was the righteousness based on the law. 
and we have been given a righteousness in Christ Jesus that is apart from the law. So the just shall live by faith. Our righteousness comes by faith. Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. So Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, he says, you want to go to heaven, your righteousness must exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees. In other words, righteousness based on the law will not get you into heaven. You want to become like Jesus Christ, you must put your faith in his finished work on the cross of Calvary. Your righteousness must be by faith. Now, true righteousness, true righteousness demands, it requires that we lay down our lives on the cross. We must lay down our lives on the cross for others in love and in service to God. Because of our love for God and because of our desire to serve him and to please him, we lay down our lives before him. For to live is Christ and to die is gain. I might still have to mute some people that came in late, yes, because noise is coming from the people that came in late. One second. Let me just mute them on the teleconference line. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I want this Good Friday to challenge us. I want this Good Friday to challenge you and I to learn to endure the discipline of the cross. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews that which father loves his child and will not discipline him. There is a discipline that the cross gives to us as believers. Purity does not come without death. Purity does not come without death. The Bible says those that have their hope will make themselves pure just as he is pure. To be pure requires that you must die. Anything in you, anything in me, that is apart from the likeness of Christ, must be crucified on the cross daily. It must be crucified on the cross daily. Now, there is a popular scripture we all like to quote. It's found in Galatians 2 verse 20. And we all like to quote it. Many of us know that scripture. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live, hallelujah, I live in the flesh. I live by faith, by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And we summarize this verse by saying, it is no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. Christ is alive. He resurrected. But I want to let you know today that you cannot claim Galatians 2 verse 20 unless you've been processed by Galatians 5 verse 24. Galatians 2 verse 20 is of no import until you've been processed by Galatians 5 verse 24. Galatians 5 verse 24 reads, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the afflictions and lusts. So you must first crucify your flesh with the afflictions and lusts. You cannot claim Galatians 2 verse 20 until you have been processed by Galatians 5 verse 24, until you've gone to the cross. Until you've gone to the cross, you cannot say it is no longer you that liveth, but Christ that liveth in you. If you've not gone to the cross, then you are still alive. Have you been crucified with Christ? You want to become like Jesus? Today, God is talking about becoming like his son, Jesus Christ. And the first question he's asking is, have you been crucified with Christ? Those that are crucified with Christ only boast in the Lord. If you want to know a man that is crucified in Christ, he doesn't boast about himself. Those that are crucified in Christ, they only boast in the Lord. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, Verse 31, it says, I will glory in nothing but the Lord. I will boast in nothing but the Lord. Now, I want us to understand something. The cross does not care 
about who you are. The cross does not care about your three-piece suit. The cross does not care about your bank account. The cross does not care about your degrees. And that is why, and that is the reason why many Christians run away from the cross. Because they care so much about those things, they are not willing to lay those things down. The cross, the cross does not care about that. When Jesus went to the cross, the cross did not care that he made the deaf to hear. The cross did not care that he made the dumb to speak. The cross did not care that he fed 5,000 men. The cross did not care that he raised Jairus' daughter from the dead. When you go to the cross, you go with your old man to die there so that the new man can come forth. And this is the reason why many believers, many Christians are enemies of the cross of Christ. Many are enemies of the cross of Christ because the cross demands death. Now, saints, if you truly want to serve God, if you truly want to serve God, the first thing God will do, <laughs> uh, the first thing God will do is to supervise your crucifixion at the cross. He will be the one supervising it. Ask Jesus Christ. God was supervising his crucifixion at the cross. He said, Father, why have thou forsaken me? When you go to the cross, it will look like as if the Father has forsaken you. When you go to the cross, it will look like you're all by yourself. When you go to the cross, you go there to die. So that it will no longer be you that live it, that old man that live it, but Christ that live it in you. Hmm. So God, people, people, that, people that really want to serve God, there are some, I come across some, I have come across people that want to serve God, and they say to me, oh, I'm waiting for this to happen before I serve God. Or I'm waiting to receive these resources before I begin my service to God. They've not gone to the cross. Those people, they've not really gone to the cross. Because when you go to the cross, you go there regardless of what you have and what you don't have. And God cannot use you until you've been processed at the cross. To live is Christ and to die is gain. Is gain. First go and die at the cross. Then after you've died at the cross and your old carnal man, your old carnal nature has been crucified, then your service to God will be in spirit and in truth. Hmm. When we take our old man to the cross, just like in Galatians 5 verse 24, it is then and only then that God will start to make you a new man. We know that familiar scripture in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. And all things become it new. You cannot, it cannot become it new except the old things pass away. So if you hold on to the old things, people that hold on to the old things are people that have not been to the cross. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, is a new creation. All things have passed away. So if the old things have not passed away and we are holding on to those old things, it's because we've not nailed them to the cross. And God is saying this Good Friday. This Good Friday, he's looking for people that will be crucified with Christ. He's saying that this Good Friday, he's looking for people that will be crucified in the flesh. People that can now say they are a new man in Christ. You cannot be a new man in Christ until the old man passes away. The old man must die. Ah. The, the cross, it's also a reminder that we must lay down our lives for other people in intercession and prayer, in giving and in supporting the advancement of the kingdom of God. The cross reminds us of those things. 
the cross reminds if you don't sacrifice the cross symbolizes sacrifice if you can't sacrifice then the kingdom of god cannot advance if you're so into yourself that you cannot sacrifice a little bit then the kingdom will not advance through you so it's going to require that we die Becoming like Jesus. If we truly want to become like Jesus, the Bible says in 1 John 3, he that has this hope purifies himself just as he is pure. Now, if you truly want to become like Jesus, then you must hate what is evil. You must hate what is evil. Romans 12 verse 9. Please, if you have your Bible, turn with me to the epistle of Romans chapter 12, and I will read verse 9. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Abhor that, hate that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. So becoming like Jesus demands that you hate what is evil. Now look at Romans chapter 12 verse 9 carefully. It exhorts us to hate what is evil. It does not tell us to hate who is evil. It does not say hate who is evil. It says hate what is evil. Just like Jesus, you must hate what is evil and not who is evil. When you hate who is evil, you start to become a judge. Now, there's another scripture, but because of time, I won't um, saddle you with scriptures. You can look at it in Hebrews 1 verse 9. In Hebrews 1 verse 9, it talks about Christ loving righteousness and hating iniquity. So it is not enough to love what is right. It is not a love enough to love what is right and what is true and what is pure. You must also hate what is evil. So you must also, like Christ, hate what is evil. Becoming like Christ, because Christ hated what was evil, that is why he went to the cross. The Bible says it is for this reason that the Son of God was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. The works of the devil are so evil. Christ hated evil that he laid down his life for you and I. You want to become like Jesus? You, ca you cannot help but hate evil. What God calls evil, you must call evil. That Hollywood spirit. God does not like that spirit. God hates that spirit. God hates the spirit of Antichrist. And you decide not to hate it, then you can't become like Jesus. If you don't hate it the way God hates it, I'm not saying hate them. No. Hate what is evil, not who is evil. If you don't hate that spirit, then you cannot become like Jesus. People that don't hate that spirit love the spirit of the world. They love friendship with the world. Friendship with the world will never take you to the cross. If you are a friend of the world, you will never be a friend of the cross. You will become an enemy of the cross of Christ. Hmm. The cross reminds us to love as Jesus loves and to hate evil as he hates it. Now, I have often said at the risk of criticism, that prayer is not enough. People have been taught to think that all they need to do is pray, 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 pray. No, prayer is not enough. Many, many believers pray fervently daily. And that is great. That is commendable. Don't get me wrong. But more is needed. Prayer is not enough. Prayer without character amounts to nothing. In fact, the Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. So that tells you it's more than prayer. A righteous man. Character. Character. So you want to become like Jesus? Be a man of prayer like Jesus. But you're going to need more than prayer. Prayer without laying down our lives at the cross is of little effect. I repeat, prayer without laying down your life at the cross is of little effect because the person is still carnal. 
the person is still full of himself and he goes to Jesus in prayer like that Pharisee on the mountaintop that say, I pay my tithe, I do this and I do that. Instead of him to be like that sinner that could not even look up to heaven and beat his chest and said, Lord, have mercy on me. So prayer without character is of little effect. You must lay down your life at the cross. And it is at the cross that we begin to be transformed to the likeness of Christ. It's at the cross that we become like Jesus. It is at the cross that we begin to be transformed to the likeness of Jesus Christ. We also need discernment and understanding. Prayer is not enough. Since we are at a point where we must elevate our faith. Prayer, we are no longer baby Christians. The Lord is building us up to a matured army. We must be men and women of prayer. Yes, my house shall be called a house of prayer. But prayer coupled with other things. Prayer coupled with faith. Prayer coupled with character. Prayer coupled with discernment and understanding. If you don't have discernment and understanding, pray for money tonight. Your prayer will not hit the target. Your prayer will not hit the target. Look at Simon Peter. Simon Peter said, Lord, we will not allow you to go to the cross. And poor Simon Peter, if he wasn't corrected, he might be praying day and night from morning to night that Jesus will not go to the cross. And that prayer will not avail much because there is no discernment and understanding in that prayer. So we need to add some other things to our prayer life. We need to add character to our prayer life. We need to add wisdom, understanding, discernment to our prayer life so that our prayers will hit the target. We want to become like Jesus. We must be united. He said a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. Jesus went to the, cro to the cross. He died for us so that we can become a body of believers, a united body of believers. God is building an army in these end times. A united body of Christ. The spirit of division has no place in our ranks. If you are someone that causes division and strife, you need to take that to the cross and nail it to the cross so that you can become like Jesus. Ah. Becoming like Jesus. When we live a life of sacrifice, when we die on the cross and we live that sacrificial life, we will begin to walk in purity. We will begin to walk in the holiness of Christ. And then we will begin to see Jesus just as he is. The Bible says when he appears, we don't know what we will become. We, don't know, we do not know what we will become. But when he appears, we will become like he is. And when we begin to walk in purity and holiness, we begin to see Jesus just as he is. And this way, we don't get to be deceived into following another Jesus that is not the Jesus of the Bible. There are so many Jesuses out there, but we want the Jesus of the Bible. We want to be like the Jesus of the Bible, not like another Jesus. Our old man, our old canal nature must die. If there's anything we take out of Good Friday, if there's anything we take out of Good Friday, yes, we rejoice that he died for our sins. But our old man and our old canal nature must visit the cross as well so that the new man can come forth in the name of Jesus. And that is what Jesus' death accomplished for us. His death accomplished for us the, the, the birth of a new man. And that is what is called regeneration. That is what his death accomplished for us. Hallelujah. As we begin to close this message, the Bible tells us to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Man needs transformation. And so do nations. Our nations also need transformation. And the sins of our nations have come back to haunt us. Now there are some of us, we need to repent for the sin of our nations. 
And there are some of us that belong to multiple nations. There are some of us that have adopted other nations. When you adopt another nation, you adopt its sins. You can't pick and choose. So that some of us, we have a nation of origin and we have a nation that we've adopted. There are some of us that are citizens of more than two, three nations. And the sins of our nations, national sins, like slavery, exploitation of the innocent, Explo exploitation of the innocent like abortion of unborn children, unborn babies. The sins of our nation include slavery, abuse, terrorism, corruption, occultism, discrimination, and those sins cannot be swept under the carpet. And many believers try and sweep their sins under the carpet. That's what Adam and Eve tried to do. They went to hide. They were hiding, but their sins were in the open. Adam and Eve were hiding, but their sins could not hide. So you cannot sweep your sins under the carpet. Your sins must be washed in the blood of the Lamb. And just as man needs transformation, so do the nations of the world need transformation. We must repent for the sins of our nation. Until the sins, until our nations take their sins to the cross, those sins are still alive. Until your sin is nailed to the cross, your sin is still alive. Hmm. And sincerely, our nations will be healed when its sins are nailed to the cross as opposed to sweeping them under the carpet. When our nations begin to cry out and say, God, have mercy for what we did to the unborn child. Have mercy. We repent for slavery. We repent for our past iniquities. I just need to mute some people. We repent for our past iniquities. Then those sins are nailed to the cross. And they die. They can't speak again. It takes a sincere heart to go to the cross. When you are determined to be like Jesus, when you are determined to be like Christ, the devil will tempt you. He will seek to counter-attack you. He will try and deceive you. He will use temptation. He will use deception. Satan will resist your resolve to be like Jesus. Why? Because the work of Satan is to try and resurrect the old man. Satan wants to resurrect the old man with his past sinful habits. But we must hold on. We must go to the cross daily and die. Now, let's pause here. Even though the cross is a place of suffering and sacrifice, it is also a place where the greatest victory was won. It is also a place where the greatest victory was accomplished. And the suffering, in order to become Christ-like, is what will usher you to victory. The suffering, in order to become Christ-like, is what perfects you and strengthens you in Christ. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5 that after you've suffered a little while, you will be strengthened. So the cross is a place of exchange. At the cross, when you go to the cross, believer, it's a place of exchange. It's an altar. An altar is a place of exchange. You exchange the old man for the new man. You say, God, I'm sick and tired of this old man. I'm sick and tired of this sin. And then the new man will rise up. This Good Friday, I think it serves as a reminder for us to be thankful that Christ demonstrated the ultimate self-denial, ultimate sacrifice by dying on the cross for us. The Bible says the handwriting that was against us, he took it away and he nailed it to his cross. And he made a public spectacle of principalities and powers 
triumphing over them in his cross. Believers, it's all about the cross. Those that think, oh, I will not serve God until I have my private jet to go preach the gospel in the four corners of the earth. <laughs> That's your thinking? Please go to the cross and die. Go to the cross and die. We are called to wash feet. Now, let us conclude this message so we have time to pray. In conclusion, as believers, we must embrace the cross of Christ. We must embrace the cross of Christ. And when I say embrace the cross of Christ, I'm not talking about the, the cross you wear on your neck. I'm not talking about the chain you put on, on your neck. We must really embrace the cross of Christ. Believers that want a Christianity without the cross. Hey, if you are a believer and you're looking for a Christianity without the cross, then that means you're a friend of the world and you're an enemy of the cross. That's what it means. You know, believers that want a Christianity without the cross have a friendship with the world. They have a friendship with the world and they seek the pleasures of the world. Because the cross and the world are at variance. Let us close with Philippians chapter 3. This Good Friday. Let us close with Philippians chapter 3. I read verse 18 and 19. Philippians chapter 3. Verse 18 and 19. Praise the Lord. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. It does not say they are the enemies of Christ. That scripture does not say they are the enemies of Christ. It says they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Verse 19. Whose end is destruction? Whose God is their belly? And whose glory is in their shame? Who mind earthly things? The Bible is telling you plainly there that those that mind earthly things are enemies of the cross of Christ. Because if you love the world, earthly things, you will not go to the cross. You cannot. You cannot. The enemies of the cross of Christ, this Good Friday, if in your heart there is an uncontrollable desire, uncontrollable pursuit of a life of luxury and the love of money, which is the root of all evil, if that is in your heart, then you need to go to the cross. You need to go to the cross. If all that is in your heart is to name it and claim it, I suggest you, you make a date, an appointment with the cross. This Good Friday, he that was rich became poor that we might become rich. Are you willing to become poor that others might become rich? Or do you desire to just build bigger bands to store your excess? If you desire to build bigger bands to store your excess, this Good Friday message was not for you. But if you're the one saying, Lord, I want to be like Jesus. I want to become like Jesus. If you can use anything, you can use me. Then let God speak to your heart tonight. Let God begin to tell you what you need to lay down at the cross tonight. Jesus laid it all for our sake. Now we must lay it all for his sake. Becoming like Jesus. Becoming like Jesus.